When we think of the Giants from the past and their approach to chest training, we oftentimes think of training with barbells under heavy loads. While those compound movements certainly stimulate muscle growth and build raw strength, dumbbell chest workouts can still get the job done. In fact, icons like Arnold and Franco Colombo relied heavily on a wide range of dumbbell exercises like the dumbbell floor press, the dumbbell fly, dumbbell pullovers, and the inclined dumbbell chest press, just to name a few. Don't think that because all you have is a pair of dumbbells or even an adjustable dumbbell that you can't get the job done too. Let's face it, dumbbells offer some amazing benefits. Improved range of motion, increased core stability, they can even reveal muscle imbalances, and they're often easier on the shoulder joints. Just because we're using a pair of dumbbells doesn't mean we can't use heavy loads either and still train the entire chest. At the end of the day, guys, it's all about stimulating the muscle fiber. Your body doesn't know the difference. Today, I'm going to give you a dumbbell chest workout that you can do with just a weight bench and some dumbbells to carve out your own classic chest, top to bottom, side to side, without ever having to step foot on Muscle Beach. And so we kick off this chest workout by grabbing a pair of dumbbells and heading to the adjustable bench, this time keeping it flat as we perform the staple pressing movement for mass, the dumbbell bench press. This is actually my favorite dumbbell chest exercise, and here, your focus should be on pressing heavy weights and letting tension overload be the main driver of your chest gains. I like to limit the repetitions here to five to six with a weight that will cause failure in this range. But as I've often suggested, the more training experience you have, the more stimulus you're gonna need for growth. That's where training not just to failure, but through failure becomes a really powerful technique for forcing new chest size. So, you'll see that I immediately stand up and grab a pair of dumbbells that I can use for a superset with a dumbbell push-up. The dumbbells themselves are actually not being lifted, but they are helping to drive additional growth by allowing for a deeper stretch on the pecs through a greater range of motion. If you compare this to a regular push-up, you can see that the dumbbells are letting me sink a little bit lower than I would usually be able to, helping me to produce a little extra stretch of my chest muscles on every rep. My rest, again, is limited to the time it takes to transition from one part of the combo to the next, which helps me to increase the overall time under tension of the set and lets me transition the hypertrophy effect from just the pure tension overload to more metabolic stress as well from the higher total rep counts I'm performing to failure. I'll do this combination three times, resting two to three minutes between sets before moving on to the next exercise in this dumbbell chest workout. And this time we target the lower pecs with the definitive mass building lower chest exercise, the dip. But here again, I take the opportunity to drive growth through tension overload and the addition of weight to the exercise in the form of, you guessed it, a dumbbell held between my feet. Too often people gauge success on this exercise by an increase in the number of reps they can perform rather than taking the opportunity to build a stronger chest and increase the amount of weight they can handle on it. So here I recommend you perform the set with a weight that will cause failure around the six to eight rep mark, making sure that you keep your shoulder blades back and down to prevent issues that could come from doing this with rounded shoulders. This is especially true in the bottom position where I wanna accentuate that stretch on the pecs and hold each rep for a brief second or two. Now, as soon as I reach failure, I drop the dumbbell and just like on the bench press, find a way to keep the stimulus coming by repping out once again with just my own body weight. Again, you should continue to be thinking about tucking those shoulder blades into your back pocket and keeping them there to ensure shoulder safety even when the muscle fatigue on the back end of this drop set sets in. Three total rounds of this now weighted body weight chest exercise will go a long way towards not only boosting chest strength, but making sure that we hit the abdominal head or lower chest fibers hard for that well-defined lower pec line. But as we know, no chest is classically developed if you're bottom heavy. You still have to work the upper chest or the clavicular head as well. And one of my favorite ways to do this is to prop that flat bench up to about a 30 degree angle and perform another killer chest exercise combination that this time uses only one dumbbell. This exercise is called the crush grip dumbbell press performed from this inclined position. The goal here is to grab a dumbbell weight that's a little heavier than what you would normally use on a traditional two-handed inclined dumbbell chest press as a single dumbbell and grip it with both hands. Now, this isn't meant to be a passive grip. I want you to instantly engage those pectoral muscles by creating an isometric adduction force. In other words, pushing your hands in towards each other, keeping them this way, engaged from the start of the first repetition all the way to your last rep of the set, never letting up for even a split second. Press the weight up directly over your upper chest and make sure to keep a slight bend in your elbows at the top to limit some of the contribution of the triceps that this narrow grip can tend to recruit. Take this all the way to failure once again, this time in the eight to 10 rep range, making sure to use a little bit more moderate weights for this combo. I say combo because reaching failure doesn't mean that you've exhausted all that your pecs are capable of. So we keep going. And we can continue to hit some of those more resilient fibers of the upper pecs by repping out with yet another bodyweight chest exercise, another push-up variation, this time the decline push-up. 
The downward angle of my body here creates an arm travel that goes from low and away to up and in, the exact same angle that's required to max out recruitment of the upper chest fibers during an incline bench press. You perform as many reps as you can until you can't do any more and aim to hit this drop set a total of three times, resting once again two to three minutes between completed rounds. Next up, we have the most iconic chest exercise of all time since it's practically synonymous with the guy who popularized them when we're talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger and specifically the dumbbell chest fly. But we're not gonna do them like he did. Look, I have all the respect in the world for Arnold and his results are obviously inarguable. The physical therapist in me knows there's a better option than the flat bench version of this that will keep your shoulders safer in the long run and it won't compromise the benefits that come from the eccentric overload this chest exercise gives us. So what do we do? We just do it from the floor. The safety net of the floor prevents excessive stress on the anterior shoulder capsule at the bottom of the rep and it actually allows for a trade-off of using heavier weights that we might typically use on this exercise. The key here is to accentuate the lowering of the dumbbells and keep the chest muscles prominent or pushed towards the ceiling throughout the exercise. It's actually easier to do this if you bend your knees and you keep your feet flat on the floor, which will help you to create more of an arch in your chest. The slight limitation in the bottom of the range of motion really isn't enough to negate the improved shoulder stability and a heavier eccentric that will more safely drive new growth. Now, as we've done with every chest exercise so far, we still have an option to train not just two, but through failure by smoothly transitioning in something called, this time, the Phelps press, the second I reach concentric fatigue on the dumbbell fly. And here you can actually cheat the positive portion of the fly by tucking the elbows and pressing the weights back up to the top, which will give your chest muscles some help from your triceps and shoulders, and then widening out the elbows again and performing another slow eccentric only rep. You keep doing this until you can't control the speed of the lowering portion anymore, and then you're done with this drop set, but not the workout. You've got one exercise left. And that is another classic chest exercise that people often confuse as just the back exercise. We're talking about the dumbbell upper chest pullover. Arnold and other golden era bodybuilders knew very well the benefits of the pullover for expanding the rib cage, but also for hammering the pec minor. The confusion around whether it hits the lats or the chest comes from a lack of understanding of how the position of the elbows during the dumbbell pullover can make a huge difference on the muscles recruited during the exercise. Keeping the elbows inside the plane of the shoulders allows the pectoralis minor to become a key driver of the exercise. Allowing the elbows to flare or drift outside the plane of the shoulders will shift the focus to the lats and minimize the contribution of the pec minor. If you think about squeezing your biceps together throughout the exercise and actually trying to turn the backs of your hands towards each other as you raise the weight up, you'll ensure that you're actually activating the right muscle and getting the gains where you want them in that pec minor and actually really the chest as a whole. A no arm range of motion here. It's not necessary to bring the dumbbell fully over your chest at the top. Tension's greatest on the pecs when the dumbbell stops at about a 45 degree angle from my body at the end of the rep. Lighter weights are definitely advised here though since the pec minor doesn't really need a heavier load but more so just good activation and focus engagement. The light weights will also spare your shoulders some additional stress. Two to three sets of 10 to 12 reps here is a perfect way to wrap up this chest workout and make more than just a few legends proud of you in the process. Look, regardless of what these guys may have been taking, it's hard to argue that the classic era bodybuilder didn't understand what complete development was all about. Developing an aesthetic chest in this case from top to bottom and side to side, and we know that you can do it limiting yourself even to just dumbbells if you know the right way to do it. Hopefully now you're armed with a complete dumbbell chest workout. As I always do here, guys, I'll give you the screenshot so you can give this one a try yourself and make sure that you're not missing anything. If you're looking for a complete program, guys, where we stack together all science-based workouts, you can find them over at athletics.com. If you're looking for high quality supplementation, we have it there as well. If you haven't done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video from us when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.